the second chapter entitled contents of the gita summarized is a succinct overview of the entire philosophy arjuna approaches krishna in a mood of humility and desperation prompting krishna to present the most fundamental aspect of spiritual wisdom krishna then explains the practical application of such wisdom and concludes by delineating the symptoms of one who has fully realized such truths tar panya dosho pahata swabhava pricchami tvam dharma sammudha cheta yashreyasya nishchitam bruhitan me shishyaste ham shadimam tvam prapannam now i am confused about my duty and have lost all composure because of miserly weakness in this condition i am asking you to tell me for certain what is best for me o krishna now i am your disciple and a soul surrendered unto you please instruct me says arjuna g stands for guru i for identity t for two duties a for atma rama the verses 1 to 10 describe guru determined not to fight but simultaneously torn and confused arjuna approaches krishna i am in dire need of guidance he humbly submits please enlighten me so that i can mitigate my miserable condition through arjuna's example we learn the first fundamental step in spirituality one must approach a guru who comes in an authentic lineage of teachers and who has mastered the spiritual art most things in life require guidance and instruction under a qualified teacher and the spiritual discipline is no different one may argue that everything that required for the spirituality is contained within and while this may be true we still require help to reawaken that pure inner consciousness as the saying goes one who accepts himself as a guru accepts a fool for a disciple i stands for identity verses 11 to 13 krishna begins his teaching arjuna the most fundamental understanding of spiritual life as the driver operates a car or as the bird lives in a cage we the spirit soul are similarly utilizing this body all the living within the body we are simultaneously different from it temporarily operating to perform activities fulfill our desires and interact with the world around us until we realize our true identity as a spirit soul we undergo the process of reincarnation accepting unnatural material bodies and the subsequent sufferings and distresses of life in this material world this is the first fundamental teaching that the guru imparts knowledge of who we really are while it may seem elementary and basic such wisdom has seldom been understood and truly realized this answer to the eternal question of who am i can set the soul free it is an answer that is worth hearing again and again one may then ask how such knowledge practically affects our day to day life in the real world krishna addresses this by delineating the two essential duties of the spiritual soul the next section verses 31 to 53 discuss two duties or t dharma loosely translates as the duty but in a deeper sense refers to our intrinsic characteristics and qualities of something that cannot be avoided neglected or negated under any circumstance firstly the soul has a swadharma a worldly duty which consists of responsibilities towards the family friends and society secondly the soul has a sanatan dharma an eternal spiritual duty which comprises of one's relationship with god nature and all spirit souls one must execute such dharma side by side many individuals neglect their sanatan dharma becoming too preoccupied with their swadharma on the extreme individuals can prematurely reject their swadharma and falsely try to absorb themselves in sanatan dharma the most progressive path is to be fully alert to both duties in doing so lead a happy and balanced material and spiritual life what is the result of someone who performs such duties with determination and enthusiasm such a person becomes an atma rama the next section verses 54 to 72 
discuss the theme Atmaram for A, a spiritually realized soul who finds pleasure in the self. Krishna explains how the Atmarama is unaffected by happiness or distress, gain or loss, honor or dishonor. Transcending the dualities of this world, such a spiritualist rids himself of qualities such as fear, attachment and anger, remains absorbed in spiritual delight and transcendental consciousness. Apuryamanam machalam pratishtam samudramapa pravishanti yadvat dvat kamayam pravishanti sarve sashanti mapno tina kamakami A person who is not disturbed by the incessant flow of desires that enter like rivers into an ocean which is ever being filled but is always still can alone achieve peace and not the man who strives to satisfy such desires. In this way, Krishna summarizes the spiritual journey from the beginning to end. In one sense, however, there is no end to the spiritual journey because this is the point at which real life begins.